some uh, some background. Uh, my background is not in computer science. It's rather biophysics, uh, genetic epidemiology. I am a computer computational scientist at our side at IS2 system. Um, we have also a rather broad user base from uh, CERN users, Atlas experiment, uh, really via bioinformatics to to humanities, and uh, we work together with the HLRS uh, for joint workshops unless some viruses do interfere. Um, so that's uh, basically uh, my background. Before I dive uh, into uh, the actual certification strategy, um, I think uh, we need to clarify a few things. There are site managers uh, who um, run modest, uh, modestly sized uh, uh, high performance computing facilities and they of course have the admins like that Brian is one and they look on teaching sometimes as a necessary evil. Um, that is because resources of course are always limited, um, teaching resources even more so. Um, and yeah, integration into HPCCF might offer uh, the link to some more um, still needed courses because they are aware that teaching is needed. So when sites would adopt uh, HPC CF and just cross-link uh, to the skill tree, for instance, um, um, an example is here on the on left where I just took a screenshot of our course overview from uh, before the crisis, um, the corona crisis, I mean. Um, well. Yeah, it, it would at least enhance the transparency of their own courses, also of their own composite portfolio. Um, the portfolio could be complemented by leaking, linking to courses in the vicinity, uh, at least for smaller sites, um, such that the own portfolio doesn't look so thin anymore. Uh, the transfer is a plus for users and certificates uh, for you users uh, when they come up to a new site, uh, let us at least see that they work with HVC, that they went beyond just submitting a job once. Um, when users start with high performance computing, usually, at least from my experience, uh, they, some of them just want to run their workflows and like, like also uh, emphasize uh, they want solutions as quickly as possible, um, but most of them, they just run third-party applications. They sometimes need, uh, they always need, but not always with it, an introductory course, uh, perhaps a scripting course, perhaps something like uh, Linux 101. Uh, but, but the only thing they are interested in is, is something which is tailored for their need, their workflows. And Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and they hardly ever use, leave their site for any other uh, high performance related courses, high computing related courses, that is. Um, so when you assign HPCCF uh, skill labels to these courses, it will also broaden newbies' uh, horizons. Uh, maybe they think that some other courses might be interesting for them too, and perhaps it's some or some asset when applying for a new job. Uh, um, really advanced users, well, they will always select their topics. Uh, they will care to travel for other sites to, to uh, visit a course, and they will actually really need introductory courses. And uh, for them, it doesn't really matter where they are. Um, they, as I said, they will travel. Uh, still, yeah, they know their courses, they know their local courses, they know their other course material providers, like for instance, Praise or other international training uh, resources. Still, they too have been, uh, have been some kind of new, in, into some kind of newbie stage at some point. So transparency will also help them to select appropriate courses and they also tend to complement a portfolio. So when they go from, from coding, via debugging, via profiling, and so forth. Uh, 
many of us uh, who are taking part here, uh, we are on the lecturer side, um, and we also benefit uh, a little bit from uh, HVCCF because uh, we can provide some transparency uh, a little easier. Um, we might and we might be eager to get some feedback from the uh, certification forum with regard to code quality. So did my students actually pass and how well? Um, and plus, uh, I think that we have learned that you appreciate when a course content is uh, not conceived in isolation. So when I uh, started to introduce uh, the, the skill tree in my uh, two slides in, uh, with my introduction uh, to the introductory course, actually people were paying attention, seeing that um, it's not just not just us who who think that they should attend and and uh, yeah actually. Um, get some education on high performance computing because uh, PIs, uh, they think like, well, you have to uh, attend this course, my dear student, but it's whether it's of additive value to you, well, yeah. Some people come up with really a lack of uh, motivation and when I show the slides uh, introducing HPCCF, they see that there is a broad community behind that, which is nice. So when, Talking about that, so when we conceive a certification strategy, we have to keep these different views in our mind. Let's uh, start with uh, the background on the certification strategy. Um, when we select questions, um, we want to select them randomly, choosing from a pool of questions which is attributed to the skill tree such that uh, the pool of questions we choose for a certain exam uh, may itself be a bundle of sub branches of the skill tree but still related to a particular topic. Um, each question uh, might have a number of uh, right and wrong answers in case of multiple choice questions and uh, in turn, or as a consequence, all examinations will be based on different sets of questions, such that it's harder uh, to prefer to a specific uh, question set because it's unknown in advance. Um, we do not require uh, uh, examinees to reveal their ID, um, but still be uh, confronting with random questions um, there is no perfect preparation, as I said, and uh, in addition, there is a time limit per question, um, also making it hard to collaborate um, on solving these questions, and uh, registration still is required prior to a test session. Um, it's not perfect, but we think that our measures will raise some kind of awareness. And if uh, a certain group wants to hire a scientist, you know, for instance, uh, a physics group wants to carry out some simulations on an HPC system, well, we intend to provide a subset of questions for prospective employers, and that um, relates somehow to Dili's uh, input, which I think is highly valuable. Um, we really have to work, have to have some work to do. Um, but that's certainly on our to-do list that oh, uh, a subset of questions will be generated. And this is why um, PIs or other employees in industry at least has, have an, an idea of the background of a uh, candidate. So that's so far to the certification strategy process. Then I'd like to talk a little bit about designing questions. Um, some of them are uh, inspired by uh, the recent book of Greg Lull, Teaching Tech Together, and some ideas are based on my own experience, some on other sources or inputs. So before we briefly dive into that, uh, please note a question always can be asked with a certain aim and different courses uh, uh, are uh, ask for different knowledges, respectively skills, and henceforth, questions need to be designed and chosen with a certain care. Um, so when we talk about multiple choice questions, 
these are popular question types uh, with regard to e-learning. Um, but we ought to ask ourselves, when are they the most suitable? And uh, I took this example from the book. So we, when teachers teach, for instance, uh, addition to, let's say, seven or eight year olds, uh, two-digit addition, um, then it's sometimes nice to see that uh, an answer is correct. But when the answer is not correct, so the question we could ask ourselves as lecturers or teachers is, well, what is the mistake the student respectively um, child is uh, actually making? So what is the misconception she's, she's dealing with? Um, like, for instance, uh, the 42 here would mean that the child did not fully, fully understand carrying over. Um, so when we rephrase this uh, young child question for newbies to the Slurm batch system, we can uh, think of a mock cluster with 20 core nodes only. And if then a job is submitted with the following parameters, how many nodes are reserved? That is also a newbie question. I think you all are aware of that. So the answer would be two. But if the answer would be four, the user did correctly multiply, but is not really aware of the 20 cores of the hardware background. Um, and some of my users would tend to say, well, we can't answer this question because they didn't understand the concept. So with multiple choice questions, we can, in ideal situation, test for the conceptual understanding of our uh, users, of our um, attendees of courses. But if we think beyond multiple choice questions, uh, there are free text course uh, questions. Um, this is something we can automatically grade if it's short and explicit. We can ask them to fill in blanks, for instance, for code questions. This is something we need to implement. We can ask them uh, to fill in Parsons problems, which could technically be done as a multiple choice question as well. We could ask them to trace code, which can technically also be done as a multiple choice question. So to give you an example on free text questions, uh, they have to be very much restricted on simple words or characters. Otherwise, we could automatically grade it, and we have to dive into that uh, exam for exam. So, one of, uh, of the questions in our pool is, let's say a script file has uh, certain permissions, but we want to make it executable. Um, so how do you do that? Here, there are only two possible answers in octal and explicit mode. Henceforth, we can actually pass that. And that kind of question is suitable to test actual knowledge or uh, at least experience. And um, sorry, I have to... I have to turn off the mic for a second because um, I have a cold. And uh, sorry. <coughs> okay, shoot. Um, so I have to go, go back to the presentation. Um, yeah, and uh, we have to use this with a certain care because we can only uh, expect a few uh, students to memorize all the nifty details when they uh, have just been introduced. Um, I think most of you are so far uh, at once that this is a, a, a no-brainer question, but you all know that newbies have a hard time thinking about that. Uh, filling in blanks is a technical variation on free text. It's more specific. Uh, it also avoids the blank screen of horror, um, and yeah, it, it tests a little bit of vocabulary. An example would be um, to fill in an operator in such a short, short snippet, such that it actually produces the expected outcome. Um, are there a lot of questions? I will have to see. Okay, and that's just a background discussion. Um, here the answer, of course, is a single character. Um, rather easy, but again, if you're new to programming, that's perhaps something you have to think about and look, about, look it up, whatever. Parsons problems, 
also avoid the blank screen of horror problem and they also allow to test for vocabulary or knowledge um, but the main focus here is uh, to concentrate on the to allow the examinee to concentrate on the work uh, control flow so in real life real tasks can be longer can be block wise and, and more integrated uh, allowing for real control flow uh, to test for real control flow uh, understanding well, uh, let's say here we have a little uh, bash loop and we need to uh, sum up some values um, then if you would rearrange the lines such they would actually work there's only just one uh, solution whether it's interspersed with uh, tabs uh, commas semicolons or white space um, it doesn't matter it's easy to pass and check and automatically grade and I could go on about that I could talk about tracing code execution labeling diagrams fixing code etc etc uh, technically the first one here tracing code execution could be implemented as a free text um, solution or uh, multiple choice question as well uh, labeling diagrams if they are pre-labeled they can also be implemented as a multiple choice question fixing code would be free text and so on and so on so it's uh, something we can easily extend because as of now we only have uh, multiple choice questions and uh, a little bit of free text so um, yeah Julie already mentioned that so we have the HPC CF wiki where we uh, describe the uh, skill set the skill tree uh, including aim objectives uh, outcomes uh, so if a student would have learned that what should she know uh, down there um, is a link always to submit a proposal for a new examination question uh, this way um, feel it's easier to contribute um, it was a quick hat by Julian and I think it's a nice feature but uh, Julie um, thankfully um, pointed out some some holes in our thinking and I think uh, there is some more work to do um, now each uh, wiki page here contains such a link um, it leads to a little form ask for merrily a contact mail um, to select the learning objective from a pre-formatted list to supply the question you thought of and in case of a multiple choice question also the possible answers and then if our question is submitted we'll see this in our uh, git log and uh, also pushed on the, on the slack channel and now we ought to evaluate a submitted question such that we have to uh, check the the rigor of the question can it actually be answered uh, does it make sense in the uh, in the skill, the skill tree and so on and so forth and then if it's uh, proved somehow uh, perhaps corrected or otherwise just left as is uh, we can merge it into the um, pool of questions um, so our assessment prototype is as follows the a user takes a multiple choice test online at any time um, any chosen time uh, as I said um, I'm actually pushing in going beyond a little bit uh, about multiple choice tests um, the background here technically is a combination of JavaScript and a web servers um, the system now uh, as already told selects a number of questions randomly from a pool um, and all contributed questions um, um, and, and by contributing questions um, contributors grant us the HPC certification forum to actually use these questions and to hand over the, the license to us in case of a sufficient number of system draws from a, from a pool uh, there are different um, um, answer sets so for multiple choice questions uh, such that um, the answer set is not always the same uh, when seen on the screen choices are submitted to the web server and up until now there is a manual approval of the result 
And uh, the last step or the, the last uh, technical step here is um, the automatic creation of certificates, which are returned by an email, um, which we'll see in the last slide. Um, we ensure privacy by uh, minimizing the information which is stored on our service, and it's only kept for statistical purposes. Um, yeah, we uh, already told you there are some measures to prevent or brute forcing, which is also a delay uh, between taking exams. How would it look like if a certificate is issued? Um, there's a PDF which is uh, sent around. Let's say here uh, the driving license could be um, uh, anything um, where the skill is actually libeled. And there is a signed uh, email as well, uh, such that uh, a user has actually proof to have uh, successfully taken this exam. With that, uh, I come to the end and I thank you for your attention. And I just go back there if there are any questions. Oh, now I switched off the chat. Now, so here it is. Um, Okay, um, that is a little bit of the drawback of this this online session here that I didn't see the um, the the questions uh, during the talk. Um, um, oh, let me go here. Okay, share my video if you'd like to. Um, like like Brian, I I just uh, didn't see a barber for merely six weeks. Uh, but I don't care. Um, all right, so um, let's go through the questions just briefly. Uh, I can't see the where, where it actually starts. No, I think that the first one is uh, Sudeep Quinn, right? Uh, where do you actually uh, register for the uh, multiple choice question test? Yes, I'll take a note. That will be in the next uh, uh, slide set. Uh, on Wednesday, um, but essentially you ne would navigate to the uh, high performance uh, computing certification uh, web page and then from there you will be directed to uh, the test. Um, as, uh, as of now, it's not really uh, implemented uh, and not really open. So what's the duration uh, for test? I'm, I think that's something we ought to see because it will actually depends on uh, the number of question and uh, there shall be no fee. Uh, for all those questions I'm going to answer, Julian, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, there's some, some input from Edinburgh. Uh, regarding of sophisticated system for automatic grading um, for even uh, math questions. I think that's uh, interesting. Perhaps we can uh, get some input from you guys. Um, and Julie asked, and you essentially asked this uh, already uh, at the end of your talk, uh, whether there is a page explaining the type of questions that we should, uh, that you should include. And my idea would be to, to um, work a little bit on the code base and then actually display this also on the web page where you can submit questions such that you have a drop down menu and uh, the, the web page then alters its look and such that you have a uh, predefined form for each type of question. And then the um, formatting is a no brainer. Um, what I what I meant this time was, did you because your slides were so clear, it immediately made me think that you already had a page with these instructions and we just didn't read enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that was what my, my question really was. It might be handy um, once we get going a little bit more 
to um, oh, because we kind of yeah. find that you answered a lot of our questions through here, but maybe even having um, each so each HPCCF wiki page has a link to where you add them, but it might be worthwhile having a little guide that's available. I don't know how you make it available for how to write them and what types of questions they are. Because we can start creating them before you have all of your the coding done. I mean, if we have a couple of questions that we're just going to sit down and pop in some night, you know, they can sit there in a stack until your coding is done. But at least it gives us guidance for what we should be making. But I did think that maybe right. you had we hadn't read, we hadn't checked. Right, right, right. No, no, it's it's all in the uh, in the process of being uh, implemented and established. Um, but you're absolutely right. I was rather thinking of a let's let's say if you submit a question, you're usually usually doing it on the web page uh, on a, on desktop, and the web page isn't as as uh, wide as a common desktop screen. So there's some space for um, a long explanation. Um, for each uh, part of, of the form you would have to fill in on what you should adhere to and uh, should look after should look after and I think this way you have it all at a glance that's at least my understanding how it could work so I would say again based on building online courses for uh, students I've, I've been doing building online and teaching online for a long time now um, that that mm -hmm. nice but you need to put it in multiple different places in multiple different ways. So I agree with that would be great. I yep. do think that maybe just a very simple page, just even maybe pulling from your slides and putting them into a document um, or a web page because you have great examples already. And then it's in multiple places and people find it that way. They're more Absolutely. likely to find it that, yeah. that way really. Absolutely, it's a docu wiki. So the docu wiki syntax allows for just uh, having a top entry which is visible at all times, and where this is not related to the skill tree, but just pops out, uh, is hardly to oversee, uh, hard to oversee. Sorry, and 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 you can just check that uh, when browsing the wiki, um, and to implement some cross links, that's also feasible. Yes, right. absolutely. But but yes, I I, I can't have to put put emphasis on all your input, but I would like to. No, under, under, understood. Um, I just you had some already, and I was like, oh, I bet we missed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, alas, not no.